shit. Hello. I'm gonna lay here for a minute. What's up dudes? Chooch, back with another one. Today I'm out here ripping on the Bego T4, doing a little bit of trail riding on this thing. And I got my ass kicked on this trail, I'm not gonna lie, dude. This was a very hard trail to ride. And man, if you wanna see some like faster stuff, that'll be towards the end. But if you wanna see me get worn out, dude, stay tuned and dude, this was hard. This is a Black Diamond mountain bike trail we're about to get into. And it had a one star rating on all trails. And usually, guys, like, all trails is is pretty good, man, with, like, the rating system and whatnot. But this one just had, like, one or two reviews on it. You know, not a very popular trail. But it had, um, it said it was a mountain biking trail. But later on, I figured out, I don't, I, I didn't see any markings for it or anything. I don't think this was a mountain bike trail. Um, I think people a few years back tried to do it on mountain bikes, but it is, it's doable on a mountain bike, but it is extremely hard, guys. And it is just rocky as hell once you get into it. But this is just the trailhead right here. This is the Bego T4 I'm riding. This is the 17-inch wheel from the company called Bego. Uh, they've been making electric unicycles a long time. Uh, the name just recently changed to Bego. It used to be called Gotway. But this wheel is um, a very unique one for sure. So there's not a lot of electric unicycles out there that have suspension and um it's slowly evolving you know there, it's coming around to where it's getting good now and so this one you can see right here is it's a fast little snappy wheel and it does have full suspension in it guys i don't know if you can really see it um towards the end you'll have i have like the unboxing and everything put in there i compiled um this whole video so if you stick through it you'll see you know a lot of cool stuff on the bego t4 um this wheel, you can see the headlight right here, guys, is incredible on this wheel. Uh, very bright. I got into this trail, and I I wasn't expecting it to be hard. Honestly, guys, you know, I was expecting, it's six and a half miles. I was expecting, shit, I'll be able to knock this trail out quick. Um, you know, just give it a quick rip through here, and I'll be done in 30 minutes on this thing. No problem. Um, ended up being, dude... It got dark on me, and my camera died. I usually take, like, an extra battery, a water bottle. You know, I'll prepare, take a cliff bar or something to have. If I'm doing a, a long ride, it's going to be a few hours, especially going into the dark in a place where I don't know. Um, but I didn't really prepare for it like an idiot here. And, you know, it kind of came to bite me in the butt. But uh, I completed the whole trail on this thing, guys. I didn't, I wasn't able to record the second half of it, and even if I was, this camera is horrible in the low light conditions, but I was able to complete the whole thing. I just rode the parts I could, and the sections that were like insane drops, or either like, dude, there were some parts that were like, I mean, it was like rocks, like, like a huge, huge rocks you had to jump up, basically, and I mean, you'd have to be a trials bike rider to ride some of that damn stuff at the, at the end of this trail. But I was just like, I was like, all right, I'm not turning around. I, you know, I'm already halfway into the trail, so I may as well keep on going. And I, I completed the entire thing, and I got to the end of it, dude. I was pouring sweat. It was like 50 degrees outside. I was pouring sweat, so, you know, engaging the core muscles, really, really working for it. But I got to the end of it. You can see it, the end of it ends over, over at the end of this lake. You see them to my right right here. And the end of it just pops out at the this is like a three mile long lake, but the trail kind of swerves back and forth. So the trail is like six and a half miles, but it pops out right at the end over there. But there's really no other efficient way. There's no road adjacent to me or anything um, to really go on. So I just completed the whole thing, dudes. And the T4 worked out well. I'm glad the suspension, this is extreme terrain that wasn't really even fun to ride on, guys. Like, I mean, I bet some of the New York guys are looking at this video like, dude, that doesn't even look fun. Like, that trail in specific, and it, it really wasn't. Like, this is not something I would ride again. But it was a great test, a great, great test for the T4 and to see what it could do. And the suspension could have been a little bit softer. If I'd have taken a little bit of air out, guys, gotten it dialed in a little bit better, it would have worked you know, incredible for this terrain. But you see right here, <laughs> that wasn't a bad crash, but I, I just stumbled. I hit that rock and I Hello. misplaced my foot and fell down. But anyways, 
the rocks are really kind of cause a problem guys and it's better to ride trails that don't have a lot of rocks in them just because one bad thing about electric unicycles is just your pedals you know it's not terrible for trails that don't have a lot of rocks to clip like that but you got to be really careful and um you know that's one kind of technical thing about electric unicycles that you know proves a good rider somebody that can navigate a trail with a lot of rocks and a lot of maybe stumps or trees on the side and still be able to flare those pedals up when they need to flare them up uh, to, to navigate or get around those rocks and it's just something you'll learn over time but a lot of places and a lot of trails won't have rocks like this where you can just go full send on it and just you know open it up 30 40 miles an hour just ripping it and have no problems but all in all guys i do love the suspension i feel like the torque on this thing is pretty good the torque could be better for sure for, especially for like um, low end um, you know coming out of corners and stuff on a trail like this the v12 high torque definitely um, wins in you know in that ball game for sure uh, but all in all the ride on this thing is great i love it with decked out with the iron man pedals but i just have the um aggro pads from e-rides on the back right there and they come with those extra led lights i don't have them turned on but you can see them back there you can just press them in the middle and they'll turn on um but you know i usually take whenever i'm, I'm doing a trail like this guys uh i usually plan it a little bit better i'm one of those guys that's into edc and everyday carry and stuff and having a flashlight and a med kit and whatever the hell you know extra water and uh you know all that stuff got kits everywhere but i'm an idiot and whenever i actually need it or am going into a situation like this one um i usually forget to take it so uh i have nice good flashlights and everything you know is what i'm getting to that i usually would take if i knew i was going to be out here at night time but I didn't even take like an extra handheld flashlight or anything. And I just used the headlight on this. You could see me pushing it right here. I'm being sarcastic, saying trail needs more rocks in it. <laughs> dude, it wore me out. I was like, dude, this trail, I was like, we need more rocks in this trail. I don't think they have enough rocks in this trail. But you can see the headlight was great, man. Honestly, it gave me a good peace of mind having that. As soon as um, night fell, I was like, dude, I'm really glad that I'm on this wheel with this great of headlight because I can easily see the rest of the trail to get out of here. I mean, it was pitch dark, guys, in a rocky, cavernous mountain bike trail. This only got worse, like, as it went on. I mean, it got gnarly. But I used the headlight on this to navigate me out of the trail and then ride back home. And I was able to get out of here and ride back home, no problem. And you see me right here, I'm riding like a total novice on this thing, dudes. And, you know, this is with, I have less than 100 miles on it right here in the current state of me riding. Um, right here, you see me fumbling around with it and, and not, just not riding it like I would my V12 high torque. And that's just simply because I just haven't had enough time to get used to it, guys. I got well over 1,000 miles on a lot of my other wheels. And, you know, it just takes like anything whether it's a snowboard a pair of roller skates whatever the hell it is you just got to take time to get used to that setup and i feel like once i get a thousand miles on this thing i'll be able to rip it like no other i really feel like this wheel once i get a little bit more time on it will be i mean i'll be able to ride it way better than a lot of the other unicycles i do have so this is just me being a novice rider right here I definitely think a little bit more time, I could be coming through here like a bunny rabbit, dude, just hopping from thing, thing to thing, hitting the berms, and even on a trail like this, riding it substantially better after like a thousand miles. All right, and so full disclosure on this, guys, this is riding uh, the day before my T4 broke down. So I still don't have parts in for my Bego T4. Uh, my, You guys probably saw the problem where I tried to jump over the log and tried to you know do that log crossing and i engaged that motor uh stator slippage or whatever you want to call it um the s22 had it this one had it long story short it's a, a third party component they source for a few of these uh, motors um, i learned recently that it's not all the units affected it's a few with this um, certain motor code uh, the person that told me there's probably a few people that know it you can comment it below but 
I got a bad apple basically with my T4 guys, but I'm glad that I did that test. I'm glad I was able to do that because they aren't going to be shipping out any more Bego T4s that do have that problem, which is a great thing, guys. And I'm glad that I could do that and do that test to get everybody on notice about it and get that fixed. And also, that really helped with getting, you know, it being a known problem with, you know, a YouTuber. That really showed right there, guys. And it got a lot of these um, uh, re resellers and retailers on notice about it to be able to fix these things for the customers that did have them affected. But now that they're on notice about it, all the ones that are pre-ordered, guys, <clears throat> that are going to be coming in soon, don't worry about it. Um, this has been addressed. They're going to fix this problem on it. And, you know, they're sending me out parts to get mine fixed. It's taking a, a little bit longer than it traditionally would. Usually they air freight these things, get them over here quick, especially uh, e-wheels. They're always on top of it and help me out with getting parts. But it was like some Chinese holiday over there. And they aren't like us in America, dude. They take a full week off over there. So they don't play around with the holidays. If they're on holiday in China, they're taking a full week off. But I just got, you know, bad timing on it. They're going to get my parts to me, a new motor, new motherboard. I'll get it fixed. If you want to pre-order this wheel and you want this wheel, don't hesitate. They're going to fix that motor stator slippage issue. And that is the only known problem on this wheel. There's no other issues with it. It has been fine other than that. And so I think it's going to be a top wheel, guys. I think it's going to be great once that's done. Because I think it, the seated riding on this thing is fun. It's fast. It's small. It fits in a car. It fits on the train, on the trolley, on whatever the hell you're taking a, in the trunk of an Uber. This thing is small. It's fun. It's fast. I love the seat. Love the headlights. It's capable of off-roading, you see here. And it's in a small form factor with that 17-inch wheel. It really is awesome, guys. They've upgraded the rim on this thing, and I've, I know they have. I've literally looked at it, and you can tell the difference in the quality of material. If you actually hit it with like a wrench, something hard, you can hear the difference in these rims, guys. This one is way thicker and upgraded, just like the V12 high torque rim is. Um, I know that the T4, the V12 high torque guys, they're smaller wheels, and they don't they don't have they basically with rocks and shit like that and and curbs and all that smaller diameter wheel is just prone to taking a harder impact on that stuff if you're because it's a fast machine you know it's not limited by how fast it is but an 18 you know 20 um, 22 inch wheel is going to roll over those curbs and stuff like that way easier so this one just even though it has suspension it needed a reinforced rim on it which they did guys which is a huge thing so I'm not dogging be good on everything. I think they really tried with this thing on getting everything dialed in and getting everything right. And I'm very glad that I could, you know, get that whole motor stator slippage thing brought to everyone's attention. And then now, if you're going to be pre-ordering this wheel, you won't have that problem. So don't hesitate. Pre-order it uh, through the links below if you want to get this wheel. I'm not telling you you got to get this one. If you don't want this one, go with anything else, but still use the links below to get whatever you get. I'm just giving you the rundown on it, doing the testing on it, and showing you what it can do. Um, this one over the V12 high torque, you know, if I had to take one or the other, if I could get a T4 that didn't have any problems, like, you know, the future ones probably won't have any issues. You know, that was just a random thing for me, and in a very, very high stress situation of trying to run it over a log. Where I engage that problem. So you can see right here, it's phenomenal, guys. I, honestly, I think the wheel is great. And if they get that problem worked out, if you had the V12 high torque or this one side by side, this one's faster. It has suspension. It's about the same price. And you know, I would probably go with this one if I could guarantee that it didn't have any issues. But in motion has been on top of it, guys. And those machines are quality. I was out riding the V12 high torque today. And I crashed the shit out of it. Dude, I literally ran it off my... I was playing around out on the porch. And I, I crashed and fell off the porch, bro. It's like eight feet high. And the thing just nosedive off the eight foot tall porch. And I went rolling off with it too. I didn't have the... What really happened, I'll tell you straight up. What happened is I didn't have the rear power pads on my V12 high torque. You can see right here... Um, I have just the back power pads, the grizzly pads, and then I have the aggro pads I put on this one. 
So I took the, ag the back half of the aggro pads off and I put them on the T4. And so I was out riding on the V12 high torque with no back pads on it and forgot about that. And I went to go jump and I threw my whole balance off, guys, and I fell off the damn porch with it. And it just straight nosedived, dude. T I mean, the V12 high torque went, I mean, it fell from eight feet in the air straight onto the nose part where the screen is. My screen was already cracked on it, so I don't know if I did any more damage to it or not, but it, it's fine, bro. It, <laughs> there's no problems with it. It literally got a few more scratches on it, but it's all good. <laughs> I, I, dude, I took out the shrub. I swear I wish I had it on video or like a ring camera out there on that back porch, bro, because it was the funniest shit, dude. I, it was only me around to see it, but it was honestly, it was just, it was funny as hell. But anyways, that V12 high torque holds up, and it's tried and true. Not as fast as this one, doesn't have suspension, but it's tried and true. So if you want to get that one and want something that's headache free to just get into the hobby, start ripping around, you know, ride, do trails, all that stuff. And the torque on the V12 high torque is better than this one. It straight up will be able to climb those damn hills in there a little bit better than this one would have sure but like cruising like this is just better on the t4 and like hitting bumps and divots and stuff like that it's just smoother on the t4 and like stuff like that is just this is way more fun and, you know the seated ride is better on the t4 there's a lot of things that are better on the t4 than on the v12 high torque at the end of the day i think the bgo t4 is going to be a top wheel i think once once they get a batch out that's problem free, I think people are going to absolutely eat it up and love it. I think the next batches are going to be good, and I wouldn't hesitate. If you want to order one, I would do it. Honestly, I don't think they're going to have a problem, and if you do have a problem, it's under warranty, and they're going to fix the thing for you. So uh, if you want one, pre-order it. Link's below. And if you want any other wheel besides this one, I'm not trying to just sell you the T4. Get them. Link's below as well. Um, any of the links from the link tree or below help me out, guys, and I greatly appreciate it. But definitely use those if you go to buy a wheel. It literally just helps me out and at no extra cost to you. But anyways, dudes, it's been Chooch. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.